Well, thank you, Sal, for that introduction. It was great. I really appreciate it. That's, that was the first thing on my list that I wanted to talk about was the Virginia Beach delegation up there. There's strength in numbers up there, and the Virginia Beach delegation is extremely unified. There's not a single one of us that doesn't like the other person up there. We even like the senators. We even like Frank and <laughs> Jeff and Harry. But the delegates, we all stick together. The senators, we all stick together. We're extremely unified. We send letters that we all sign if we need to uh, have an issue before the governor, go meet the governor. In fact, the governor, oh, probably four or five days before we adjourn, asked myself, Sal, Chris Stolle, and Ron Villanueva to come in and have a private meeting with him and share some thoughts. And I had a list that day also. So go in there. When you're going to go meet with the governor, you're going to go meet with someone, I have a list. I say these are some concerns we've got. And if they try to dance around the edge, you know, we kind of bring them right on back in again and say we need some straight answers. Well, we had a good session up there this year. We went up there. We had some pretty tough uh, issues to deal with. One issue that we dealt with is, y'all know I'm a farmer. I own some land. I bought and paid for every piece of land that I've got. So I believe in property rights. This year we had the first reading on a constitutional amendment for eminent domain. What we believe in Virginia, and I was co patron in the bill, and it passed out of the House, passed out of the Senate, the governor, I'm sure, you know, will endorse it. We'll have to come back again next year, and then the voters will have to vote on it. But eminent domain, we're a strong property rights state, but we want to reinforce that. And by reinforcing that, what we say is you can't take our land unless it's for the public good. And when I say public good, we want to define that. Definition, a transportation project, or a major utility project for the public good. Don't take it for economic gain. Don't take a, uh, an auto parts dealership, or an old uh, used auto parts from Norfolk and buy it through uh, eminent domain and condemnation and sell it to somebody else. They can put some big high rise in there. That's not what this is about. That's why we passed in the first reading eminent domain this year, and we're reinforcing Virginia is a good place to do business. You know, in Forbes magazine and some other rankings, we've got a AAA bond rating. We're the best managed state in the United States. We're the best state to do business in the United States. And what we do, Sal and myself and all of our colleagues, we go up there and we reinforce that message that Virginia is open for business. It's a nature to beast for us to go up there and kind of complain, you know, our taxes are too high, this is too high, that's too high. And some, and, and some of those things are right, but it's the best state in the nation, Virginia is. We started in 1607 when we got here and set foot right on down the road down here, and it's been the best then and it's the best now. So uh, I tell you, I'm just as proud as I can be to represent the state of Virginia, Commonwealth of Virginia, and, uh, and to represent y'all. One thing that we did this year, we wanted to go up there, and this isn't a true budget year because our budget is once every two years, but we have budget amendments. We had a little bit of extra money this year going up. The Senate and the Democrats want to spend every single bit of money and then some on social programs. So the Senate, that's what they wanted to do. The House said no. Our objective is we want to take any extra money that we may have, put it on transportation, put it in the rainy day fund, and only spend for one-time only programs, not reoccurring programs. So we didn't want to raise taxes, which the Senate did. We didn't want to have any new fees in there, which the Senate did. So, so I will tell you, we pulled a little uh, pretty good one on the Senate. We got in there. The Senate has been kind of whooping on us for the last few years. We made up our mind they weren't going to do it this year. We have a, a delegate from up in Appomattox, been there a long time, Watkins Abbott. He and I, we get there early. He, uh, I beat him there twice this year, and but I'm the second delegate to get in the General Assembly building every day. Sometimes I'll get there at a couple minutes after six and Watkins Abbott will get there at six o'clock. Sometimes I'll get there at about quarter to six and just sit there and grin when he walks in. But I'm the first one there. He and I sit there and talk in the mornings along with some others that come in. He buys some property, I buy some property. We were in our caucus talking about how to hold the line on the Senate when they wanted to up our taxes a little bit. Watkins got up there, had the doors closed, 
reporters were outside and Watkins says, Barry and I buy some property. And the only way that you can buy property is to set a price and be willing to walk away from it. And that's exactly what we need to do with this budget is tell the Senate, this is what we're gonna do. And if you don't like it, we're gonna walk away from it. And we were in a power position because we already had a budget. These were just budget amendments. And if we walked away from it, then the Senate couldn't spend that money. It'd be stuck there, and Bob McDonald has a 15% difference that he can go and spend it. So the Senate says, well, we'll compromise with the House, or we'll let Bob spend it. So we gave out a great big old cheer. Everyone said, yay, like that. We walked out, the reporter said, do y'all have a budget? And someone told the reporters what we said. It said, we we're willing to hold the line on the Senate, or we're willing to go home. The message got to the Senate, the Senate folded, and we had a budget with no new taxes and no new fees, which is what they were looking for. We, uh, I'd like to tell you some committees that I'm on. I'm on uh, agriculture for obvious reasons, but <laughs> agriculture, we have, uh, it's called Agriculture, Chesapeake, and Natural Resources, and they are the three subcommittees. Agriculture deals with anything with agriculture or animals, and Chesapeake, of course, deals with the Chesapeake Bay and the watershed, and natural resources deals with a lot of rules and regulations, permitting <laughs> regulations and such. That is a very, very important committee because it's taken us longer on road building to get our permits than it is to physically build the road. <laughs> I think that's ridiculous. I put in a bill this year that said if you go to build a road, the city of Chesapeake, y'all know that I represent half the geographic area of Chesapeake also, which is 25% of my district, 75% of my district is Virginia Beach. Chesapeake said that the permitting process was so onerous, would I carry a bill for them? And I said, absolutely. The bill said that if you have to go to build a road, get an Army Corps of Engineers permit to clear some land, if you have to get exactly the same identical <coughs> permit from the state, why double dip on it? Would save time, would save money. I put that bill in. The bill totally passed the House. It sailed right on through. Went, was going to the Senate. Some people thought that possibly this bill uh, may have some unintended consequences about broader than just road building. And also, I found out once I got into it that sometimes you can actually get the state permit faster and you can waive the state permit to the feds and say, feds, now you need to hurry up and give us our permit. When I found that out, I didn't want to upset the apple cart on our roads. So I referred this bill to transportation, to the Joint Transportation Accountability Commission to see exactly if I could fine tune this bill. So I pulled that bill, and I'm trying to get their attention in there. And I got their attention because <coughs> EQ, and now the Army Corps of Engineers says, since you introduced legislation, we understand that we've got a problem. We're going to kind of tighten up a little bit. So that's one of the things on my committee of uh, agriculture that I'm that I'm on on that. My other committee is county, cities, and towns. If you'll, if y'all do know that we're a Dillon Rule state, which keeps us extremely consistent across the state in what we can do and what we can't do. A Dillon Rule state means the localities can't do a thing unless the state <coughs> government gives them explicit permission, not implied, but explicit permission. So that's why when some company wants to come to Virginia to do business, they know that there's a level playing field all the way across the state of Virginia. As y'all know, I was on Virginia Beach Planning Commission for six years, chairman for my last two years, so I understand local government. And there is a ton of difference between local government and state government. We're having a little bit of an issue right well it's not a little bit it's a pretty big issue right now admiral metz was talking to me about it a while ago you know when we had the BRAC situation come down one of the uh, items in the BRAC agreement was the city of virginia beach would put in 7.5 million dollars every year and the state would match it with 7.5 million dollars every year to buy land between Ventress and oceana so they wouldn't build houses in there well, we've been trying to deal with the city, been trying to get some information with the city. When we ask the city for some information, they're getting us the information, but it's very, very slow. Because 
city council meets a couple of times a month. They take their time. They try to defer things. When we're up there, and we're up there for 45 days, when we ask for information, we don't need it in a week or two. We need it in an hour or two. So we've had to rattle the cage a little bit. And uh, some of my colleagues think that I don't know what they're doing to me, but I'm a little bit smarter than they give me credit for. <laughs> Sal and some of them say, you know what? We kind of got to get on, uh, you know, the city about something, you know? And he said, what, what are we going to do? And I said, we're going to call them. They said, well, uh, Barry, why don't you call them? So, <laughs> so, I call them. So I'll call the city. Once in a while, we'll have a little issue with the governor. governor and I see them all huddle over in the corner, Sal and all of them. Then one of them will come on over and say, we got a problem with the governor. says, well, you need to call him, too. So, <laughs> so, anyway, I'm, uh, I've never been accused of being afraid. So that uh, on county, cities, and towns, we do have an item up there now where what happened was the General Assembly did it put in the budget 7.5 million. Now the city's gonna put theirs in. We didn't put ours in the General Assembly, and I'll tell you why, because they came and they asked the city for information. The city didn't give them some information, which was how much land have you bought of the total in the APC-1 and in the clear zone, which are your two high traffic areas, as opposed to how much did you buy in the inner traffic facility area, which is the whole area. They weren't forthcoming with that information as fast as they should have been. Still haven't gotten it yet. I've asked for it. Sal's asked for it. We're going to have it when we go back up there. We have asked the governor to put this money back in his budget, and we'll vote for it. The reason we didn't, we're well not we, but the conferees didn't have it in their budget, they asked Virginia Beach how much money is left. Virginia Beach has $13 million in the pot that is not spent. They've got $3 million that they have contracts for and $10 million to sit in this pot of money. Now, our budget, you know, we're talking about this in January and February. The fiscal year ends in June the 30th, and they say that they'll have the money spent by June the 30th. That's good, but we need the documentation where we can go up on the House floor and the Senate floor and say, here's a documentation where we're gonna have this money spent. So when we go back up there, we are going to have the documentation because we set up a meeting, uh, what was it, three days ago, Sal, with the mayor in town center and said, if you want the money, you're going to get us this documentation because we're going to fight for the money, but we have to have some bullets in our gun. We can't go up there with an empty magazine. So that's where we are on that. We're also going to get the four star, uh, Admiral Hardy, to come to Richmond to see. Uh, the, uh, the big man senator and the big man in the house, the speaker, to try to prevail on them about we need this money as a good faith gesture. So I am very optimistic we're going to get to seven and a half million or maybe a lesser amount. <coughs> we need to honor that commitment because Oceana is an absolute economic engine. And as bad as we think that this last recession was, it would have been many, many times worse were it not for Oceana. And Oceana is not a Virginia Beach thing specifically. 25% of the people that work at Oceana work in Chesapeake. And we have to send a signal to the Department of Defense that we're willing to protect our defense installations in the entire Commonwealth of Virginia. So it's a big, big signal that we're sending.